looking at encounters with Jesus Christ. We saw that the uh, people of Nazareth, his hometown people, and uh, what a, uh, a sadness it must have been for him to see his hometown people reject him, and not just reject him, but try to kill him, to fire him over a cliff, to away with this man. And yet the Lord Jesus, of course, miraculously passed through the midst and continued to do his ministry. My friend, you're either going to be for Jesus Christ or you're going to be against him. May I encourage you to a divine encounter where you receive him as your Lord and Savior, for he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We saw the, the encounter of John the Baptist with Jesus Christ. Uh, indeed, probably more of a lifelong encounter with him. And yet, uh, the wonder and the blessing of a man who walked with God to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and left us with a motto to live by, he must increase and I must decrease. We saw the encounter uh, that uh, Peter had with Jesus Christ and the ongoing encounters. And in some of these lessons we will be seeing the ongoing encounters because I want to encourage you to have ongoing encounters with Christ as well and to see how God shapes a person and brings those transformations uh, as we go through life. Uh, we are not static. We will not stay in one place. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to at the, just after the birth of Jesus Christ. And I was going to do this encounter first, but uh, for some reason, uh, the Lord has been directing me. I, I take confidence that he is doing that. And I'm going to go back uh, to the Gospel of Luke. And after eight days, Luke chapter 2, verse 21 and eight days after uh, the school completed for the circumcision of the child, that is Jesus, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. All they had to do was travel from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. Remember that they were in Bethlehem for almost up to two years uh, when the wise men came and when Herod tried to kill, and did kill, all the babies. And so, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, the normal sacrifice would be a lamb, but if you were poor, then it was a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. They were poor. And that is evident here in the sacrifice that they brought to offer to the Lord on behalf of Jesus. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Here was a man that was prepared by God. Here was a man who was in his old age, was there, and yet... Uh, he had experienced God. He was a devout person. He was a man who was seeking to know the Lord and seeking to know him in such a way it says he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was waiting. He was looking. He was longing. And the years had rolled by and nothing had happened. And this day they brought Jesus into the temple. Now the Holy Spirit was upon him because it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. This was the apex of his life. This is what he was longing for. This is what he was waiting for in life. You see, the Spirit of God prepares people. He prepares people to encounter God. He is at work in people's lives. And perhaps as you're listening to this, the Spirit of God has been preparing you and calling to you so that you might know, you might see the revelation of the Christ, that you might have an answer. I was just recently reading some testimonies of people, people who had longings to know God and took certain paths to try to find him and found those paths to be empty. But eventually, in that longing, they met the Lord. There was a divine encounter for them where they met Jesus Christ, where they saw who he really was, where they saw that he was the answer 
that he was the salvation that they were looking for, and everything changed. I bless the Lord and I praise him that he prepares hearts, that he digs up that hard soil, that he prepares the soil so when the seed of the word falls in that it can bear good fruit. And so he was. Uh, God had worked in Simeon's life and Simeon was a man who was devout, he was just, and he was looking, waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's the title of Jesus that we find here. The consolation of Israel. Isaiah 41 speaks of this. This consolation, it's a beautiful word because it means that he is, Jesus came to console Israel. How tragic that they refused to be consoled. How desperate that many refused to accept the consolation of God. But praise God, there were some who were ready. There were some who were waiting, and here is one, Simeon. Now, he was not going to get to see what Jesus accomplished. He was an old man. But it was enough for him to be able to see that the Savior had come, the Messiah, the Christ, that the promises of the Old Testament would be fulfilled. The Spirit of God was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. He would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. You see, friends, when the Spirit of God is upon you, Jesus said it. We saw that when he was in Nazareth. He spoke. He said, the Spirit of God is upon me. But I want you to know that the Spirit of God is upon his people. We are not left orphans. We are able to be guided by the Spirit of God to be in the right place and to know His guidance and direction. To be able to rise up in the morning and what a privilege it is as a Christian to be able to say, Lord, I need your guidance today. I, I, I need God's guidance in this week. This is a busy week for me. And in this week, I'm, I'm, I'm packing Gaspero. I have a crew that's doing it. And, and I have to do these devotions ahead of time. And I've been seeking the Lord and asking His guidance in what to do and, and, and where to go. And, and, and it's marvelous because I sense and I know the leading of the Spirit of God in all these things. And it's wonderful to go through your days and know that there are no such thing as just chance encounters with people, that God is guiding your footsteps. And that opportunities to share the gospel will come before us because God is guiding. And I just want to encourage you, if you're not a Christian, you don't know what you're missing. And if you are a Christian, make sure you're not missing walking in the Spirit. The Bible tells us to be filled with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was upon Simeon. And revelation came from the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that is our teacher. He reveals truth to us. He takes the truth of the Word of God and He makes it real to our lives and hearts and souls. And not only that, He came by the Spirit into the temple. He was at the right place at the right time. He was just where He needed to be. It wasn't the day when, oh, well, I have some chores to do so I won't be at the temple on time. Or, oh, I, I, I just, uh, I've got, you know, I'm distracted. There's something else I need to do. No, he was led by the Spirit of God. He came by the Spirit into the temple. I mean, there were lots of families that would be bringing babies. There was lots of activity going on. He could have easily missed this. I mean, it was just one amongst hundreds, probably. And here's this one old man who just happens to be at the right spot to see the baby Jesus. There's no happens to be. It is the divine encounters of God. And that is so exciting when we are looking at divine encounters here that we can be praying that people will have in divine encounters with God. We can ask for the Spirit of God to move. But my friend, you need to be asking the Spirit of God to have such control and rule over you that your life is in His hands, that you are moving in the work and the way in the Spirit of God. He uses people like us. I'm just kind of a random person. Huh? I'm on the go and... I tell you, it's not easy to work for me, even for my own daughter, because I don't know what I'm doing from one day to the next often. Because things come up, funerals come up, visitations come up, whatever it might be. It, But I want to be led of the Spirit of God. Now, that doesn't mean God can't lead with planning and moving forward. Yes, He can. But I find it a wonder that God would, would, would actually be upon me and lead me with my chaos that I call it sometimes 
but oh how often I have known that I'm in the right place at the right time. And that's what happens with Simeon here. Oh, there's lessons to learn from that alone, is there not? Yes, oh, to follow the leading of God, to be sensitive to the Spirit, and to go about your daily chores and, and the things that you need to do in life, confident that God has you to do them. And in that process, being alert to what God might do. Oh, it's such an adventure. And so, he was there. He came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, Simeon was there. He was there. And so this old man comes. He sees this baby, and he took him up in his arms, and he worshipped God. He blessed God. Must have been a little bit startling for Mary and Joseph, as this man comes up, this stranger, and picks up their baby and begins to worship. Here's what he says. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. He knew that he wasn't long before he was going to leave this world. And he said, you're letting me depart in peace. Why? It is according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Lord, you are giving me this privilege. You promised. You revealed to me that I would see the Lord's Christ, the consolation of Israel. And here he is. I have him in my arms. Oh, no one could measure the joy that this man experienced here. This wonder that went through him. As he realized, I have the Lord's Christ. I have the one who was promised. Oh, all of Israel was longing for a Savior and a Redeemer to come. And now Simeon has the privilege of holding him in his arms. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. It has been pre prepared. God prepared for Jesus to come and is before the face of all peoples. And my friend, it, it, that's true. It was so prophetic. All peoples have been, the, the person and the work and the glory of Jesus Christ has been revealed. It has not been kept in a corner. It has not been kept in a little country of Israel. But the whole world has been exposed to Jesus Christ. And then he says this, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. This was something the Jews didn't even understand. They didn't think the Gentiles were worthy of anything, the non-Jews. And yet we see it prophesied in the Old Testament, for it was Isaiah 9, 2, Isaiah 42, 6. And yet uh, Simeon knew it. He knew that this was the answer for the world, not just the answer for a few people, not just for Israel, but for the entire globe. And so this is the words of Simeon as he worshipped, as scripture was being fulfilled, as the Old Testament prophecies were coming to pass. And this old gentleman who walked with God was given this privilege this declaration that we get to hear, that the Spirit of God considered important, that we see this divine encounter, that we see the fulfillment of Scripture, that we see that God is in control. We see that God can direct us to specific appointments and that God can reveal truth to us that is life-changing. Oh, what wonders. Oh, what it is to walk as a Christian, friends. Uh, you know, I do think that it is quite possible that many Christians are missing, they are missing the glory of walking in the Spirit, of living in surrender and submission, of waiting on God, and of being sensitive to His leading. Let me encourage you to start walking in the adventure that you have as a Christian, if you are one. And if you're not, you're missing something marvelous. So Joseph and his mother, they marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Now had that not been revealed to them that he was the Christ? Had they not had the shepherds come to that stable? Had they not had the angels 
appear to them, to Mary, to Joseph in her dream? Did they not know? Yes, they knew. But the wonder of it all, and the confirmation that it would have been to them, this was no dream. This was no chance. This was reality. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. Oh my, what a... They marveled. No wonder they marveled. Then Simon blessed them and said to his Mary, Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign which will be spoken against. It will be the, uh, a sign, he says, a destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel. You see, many who were high were going to fall. And many who were low were going to be raised up by Jesus. It's still happening, friends. If you're full of pride and grandeur of yourself and self-glory, you think you're so righteous, you need to fall. And if you are fallen and broken and ruined, you need to be lifted up. And Jesus, Jesus would accomplish it. He did accomplish it in Israel. We see that he did it, even in his ministry. But my friend, he is still doing this today. And he is a sign which will be spoken against. Well, that was true. There was nothing, and no error in Simeon's prophecy here. It definitely was true. And it still is. He's still spoken against that precious name of Jesus. And then he says, yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. It was hard news, but it was true. Mary, you are going to suffer. You're going to suffer deep anguish of soul. And of course she did. As you can imagine her standing at the foot of the cross and seeing her beloved son being crucified. But there was a purpose in it. Mary, you're going to experience pain and sorrow and suffering, but it's so that the hearts of many may be revealed. So that there will be true revelation of where people are at. So that you will know who you really are. So that you could know your sin, your lostness, your true heart, the Bible says the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, but also that you could have a new heart, that God could come and, and bring transformation in your life. These were the words of Simeon in this divine encounter. But you know, God didn't leave himself without a, a, more than one witness here. As Joseph and Mary were there in the temple and hearing these words, and as Simeon fades from our scene, as Simeon accomplishes the task that God had given him to do, not only that he would get the blessing, but that he would pour out the blessing in the revelation of who Jesus was. As the Lord, uh, no doubt, very quickly following this, took him home. There was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about 84 years. So, she was a widow for 84 years. She had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, which was probably... Somewhere at that day, that day would have been the age of 13, 14, maybe 15 years old. So 15 plus 7 plus 84. Well, 84 plus 15 is 94. Uh, plus 5 is 95. And add 7 more. Puts her at about 100 and... Uh, where did I go? <laughs> I lost my math. Over a hundred years old. 84 and 15, 94, 95 and 7. It's 102. And that's a guess. She wasn't no spring chicken here. But she lived in the temple. Did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. 
And coming in, in that instant she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Israel. She began to declare. Simeon prophesied who he was, but now Anna begins to preach who he was, declaring to everyone that this is the one. This is the redemption for Israel. Whoa! What encounters these were. There in that temple, God did not leave himself without a witness as Joseph and Mary brought this little baby in to make the sacrifice. My friend, these divine encounters are encouraging because they show that God is in control all the way through and that God can guide his servants to be exactly where they need to be and that we too can be led of the Spirit of God that we can walk in fellowship with God and we can know the things of God. And as a result of knowing the things of God, we can have wisdom and revelation. This is, this is glorious stuff. And it's for you, friend. You need that in divine encounter with God. You need to come to Jesus Christ and be saved. And once you are, we need to continually come to Him and be led of the Spirit of God. Are you getting a pattern here? Are you seeing how important it is to walk in the Spirit and to be surrendered to the living God as He trains you, as He transforms you, and as He uses you for His glory? Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this lesson and this divine encounter today. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's a song, and I'm going to sing it a cappella, and it is a prayer based on uh, some verses from the Psalms, and it is, Lead me, Lord. Oh, to be led of the Spirit of God. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Simeon was led by the Spirit. John the Baptist was led by the Spirit. Peter learned to be led by the Spirit. And so do you. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in your righteousness, make your way plain before my face. Lead me, Lord, lead me in your righteousness, Make your way plain before my face. For it is you, Lord, you, Lord, only that makes me to dwell in safe. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own strength. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own strength for it is you lord you lord only that makes me to dwell in safety. What a wonderful prayer. May it be yours. May you experience being led of God. May you have incredible divine encounters with God and with men and women.